Okay, we've got some uh, amide reactions. How do we do on these? Um, acetic anhydride. That'd be acetic acid, but we have the anhydride. Got a nucleophile, electrons here, up. I'm going to quickly come back down, kick that off. Okay, shortcut. Can't do this on test though. What does that give? That gives, this is R group. To here. Now bonded to that carbon. There. Plus charge. What was the leaving group? The leaving group was that minus. Uh, something's got to take the H to go neutral. Acetic acid could take it. What else could take it? Triazolamine. Take the H, go neutral. Final product would be nitrogen with only one H bound to carbonyl. Plus your triazolamine acetate. Nitrogen plus O minus. We turned the amine into the amide. We acylated the nitrogen. Put an acyl group on it. How do we get how do we do with getting that product? Here. If you're having difficulty with the mechanism, Frankly, you're behind, way behind. Okay. Next one. Uh, cyclic anhydride. We have a nucleophile. A means good nucleophile. Which carbonyl do you want to attack? Top or bottom? Oh. Actually, doesn't matter. If you want to attack the top, we'll attack the top. <laughs> Symmetrical anhydride. Okay, either one. We can attack this, electrons up, I'll do it stepwise, electrons up, what do we get? We have electrons up to the oxygen, the nitrogen attacked, there's two H's there, and a methyl, plus charge, two methyls, only one H, Plus charge. We just made that bond. Nitrogen attack, electrons up. What else is on this? Oxygen, carbonyl. So the nitrogen just in a nucleophilic addition to carbonyl, electrons up. Now what happens? Electrons back down. What do we kick off? Now we can take care of proton right here if we if we wanted to. <coughs> if you're doing a mechanism, you can take care of it right there. Take it off. Ultimately, we know we're gonna. The other leaving group is going to be kicked off if we get anything new. Because if we kick the nitrogen off, we get no reaction. It goes back. Kick off the oxygen, what does that give? This carbon now has double bond oxygen because what does that arrow mean? Reform carbonyl. What's on this carbon? NH methyl. Methyl, that's still a plus charge. What's down here? Carbonyl, <coughs> oxygen, what's on the oxygen? That's the negative, that's the leaving group. It left the upper carbonyl, but it really didn't leave the molecule. Uh, here's where we have sort of uh, dealing with the proton issues. So I only included one equivalent of a mean. What can we do here to go neutral? This needs to lose an H. That needs to gain one. What do we want to do? Proton transfer. We did proton transfer. We could get a final product, which would be the dimethyl amide of there and the carboxylic acid down there. <coughs> H plus transfer. You got an internal base down there, you got an internal acid up there. 
Um, the problem is that final product is a, is a carboxylic acid. It has a carboxylic acid. And this is the base. So that base is going to take this proton. And if it takes the proton, what do you get? You get back here. But you have to account for that. Um, really, this needs two equivalents and then an H plus workup. Because the other equivalent of base is just going to deprotate it back to this, consume your base. And then the H plus workup would put it back on. Does everybody understand the, the dealing with the protons? We can't just say there, there's your acid. Because that's an acid. Reactants are base. We can't say, hey base, oh, I want you to only react with the carbonyl. As soon as you start making that acid, it's going to react over here. Acid base reaction is instantaneous, it takes it back here. This is in step one. You want to, it's actually not in step one, is it? Uh, just notice we got a proton there. We got a proton there. This is going to give. This here. Base takes H, make this. This is in step one. We could get to that another way by instead of doing the proton transfer, we could just have the base take that H. That would get that. That's in step one. Then the H plus workup gives that. Why do you need the H plus workup? Yeah, because if you make the proton off the Because to get a neutral product. And this is if this is how it will exist. Are we under acidic or basic conditions? The product will be in the basic form. If you want a neutral product, you gotta put an H plus on. What type of reagent will put an H plus on? Acid. Strong acid. Why do we want to Maybe you don't. Typically, we show and make neutral products, though. So if you ask this question, a predict product question, would you want to show the neutral product? Or would you specify? Uh, if I said H plus workup, I would show the neutral product because H plus workup is going to put the proton on and give you a neutral product. If I didn't say H plus workup, it would be this because that's the end step one. Make sense? This here? This here? No, the NH2, NH2. Usually just looking for the clean organic product. Okay. Do what? From the, the base that took the hydrogen when you show that product with it. Usually we just show the organic products, the main organic product. If, if you, you can show the other species then? Can you show it? Good. So, it's, so if asked to show it, you can show it. Good. Um, okay, next one. We have an alcohol. We're really doing an anhydride reactions. Anhydride, anhydride, anhydride. Alcohols can also react with anhydrides. Uh, 
acetic anhydride. Alcohol, pyridine. Electrons up, down, kick off the leaving group. It's going to give this here. Pyridine can take the H. And we get final product of right there. Alcohol was converted to what functional group? Esther, what did we put on the oxygen? What's it called? It's a carbonyl. What's it called? What type of, what's it called? What's the terminology for the reaction? Yeah. It's up there, right? I didn't hit the heading. What are we under? C? Acyl. Acylated. We put an acyl group on the oxygen using acetic anhydride. It's an acylated <laughs> reagent. Acyl. Acyl is a term for, putting, for carbonyls. So you can hydride is an acylating reagent. It'll acylate an alcohol, it'll acylate an amine. That gives an ester, that's the functional group. Up here, get amide. Uh, questions about those? PK of pyridine. PK of pyridine is about five. Same as about at aniline. Why do you ask? I was thinking about if it was a strong enough base to depregnate the alcohol. Depregnate the alcohol at the beginning? Mm -hmm. No. It's done. This is about 16. If you remember when we did Williamson ether synthesis, <coughs> sodium hydroxide was not even strong enough to depregnate alcohol. Mm -hmm. We had to use like sodium metal or sodium hydride. Mm -hmm. The pyridine's not the pyridine is strong enough. Take that H because there, that H looks like an acid. I mean, that looks like H3O plus. It's oxygen with a plus charge. If instead I had two H's up there, okay, it's, a, it's very similar. It's an H on a positive oxygen. This is an acid. But an H on a neutral oxygen is not an acid. Like water, not an acid. Of course, anything can act as an acid. There's a difference between an H of a positive oxygen. See, this has a pKa of probably minus 3 or 4. And pyridine is strong enough to depropagate it. Pyridine actually is not required in this reaction. What could depropagate this other than pyridine? The leaving group. Because at this point, we do have the leaving group. The leaving group could take the H and you would make the product plus acetic acid. A lot of times pyridine, a weak base is included because you don't like to generate acids. But here it's not actually necessary. With amines it is, because the amine will react with your acid. Alcohols won't react with acid as much as amines. Mixed anhydride. Somebody pointed out that that right there is not actually a mixed anhydride. You're right, I should just call these anhydrides. That one's not mixed, that one over there is mixed. Uh, let's do some reactions with mixed anhydride. How do we do on these? I think we did the first one, didn't we? Did we talk about which <coughs> here, which carbonyl we're going to attack? Here we have to decide. We've got sp3 carbon that donates, so that, that partial positive right there is not as partial positive. We've got a rich friend over there. Donating electrons. Mm -hmm. 
So what do we get? Up, down, kick that off. I'm not going to do full mechanism or even uh, partial mechanism. We get that product right there, right? Hopefully you already got something on your paper. Is that what you got? Basically, this side is going to be the leaving group. So the nitrogen replaces all that. We end up with, a, instead of an oxygen on the carbonyl with an H, we've got a nitrogen on the carbonyl with an H. And the nitrogen does have to lose an H to go neutral. What can take the H? Trapsilamine. How about the one below? Which carbonyl is more electrophilic? That is more loving electrons, thus meaning it's more electron poor. Which, which carbonyl is more electron poor? Let's see, we know this one donates. How does it donate? By what? Inductive donation. What do we know about the electronic properties of this guy? Oxygen. Resonance donation. But it can also inductively withdraw. So which one is, does it do more? When it can do both, it does resonance more. So this donates... Uh, by resonance, that donates by induction. Which is a stronger effect, resonance donation or induction donation? Resonance. Stronger effect. So which one, which carbonyl is most electrophilic? I was hoping it was going to be unanimous. Unanimous, the one on the right. Why does, do we say the one on the left? We're talking about this being partial plus. This poor guy has a, and a rich friend. We said that's the, the, the richest friend, donating more. So which, which guy is more poor? The one with the richest friend or the one with the not so rich friend? Yeah. This gets quenched by the donation. We said that was a stronger donation. This here, this is more partial plus. This gets quenched. It's actually real small. This is like boom, boom, boom. I'm bigger compared to this. These electrons are over here watching like, hmm. Okay, I'm just coming here. Electrons up, back down, kick off the leaving group. What do we get? Oxygen here. Nitrogen here. With it. I'll do it. <coughs> now it's bonded to the carbonyl. Which carbonyl? The carbonyl with the O-ethyl or the carbonyl with the methyl? The methyl plus charge. What was the leaving group? Oxygen with an O ethyl. This is actually not an acid derivative, is it? Those acid derivatives, carbonyl has three bonds to a more electronegative atom. How many bonds does this carbon have? Four bonds to a more electronegative atom. Actually, not an acid derivative. Something's got to take the H. This could take the H. What else could take the H? Somebody threw in some base. All right. It could take the H. And we get final product. Ah, we're, not, we're not aerobatic. We're oxygen and nitrogen. We just acylated the nitrogen. We used a mixed anhydride. There's a number of other ways. We could basically could have made the same product using uh, acetic anhydride. We could have used acetic anhydride. We could have also used just this acid chloride. Either of these would have given the same product. So. Well, it depends on what we're doing. If you do a predict the product, do a predict the product. I don't care what you do as long as you show that. Okay. 
if we're doing mechanism and you do something and you ignore this, I'm going to say, what's the purpose of that? Okay. Because if it's there, it must be important and we need to uh, uh, address it. I've used this mix in hydride up here. You might think that you get mixtures, it might attack here and here. It only attacks over there. It gives great yield of just that product as opposed to attacking over here. Um, other applications of anhydrides. When we say anhydride, we're talking about anhydride of a carboxylic acid. Like acetic anhydride is the anhydride of acetic acid. You can have anhydrides of other types of acids. For example, you can have an anhydride of phosphoric acid. What does it mean to be an anhydride? That means we take two equivalents. Anhydride, well first off it means we remove water. But usually you take two equivalents of your acid, they react, and you remove water to give sort of a dimer. And that's what we did before. And so if you if you add this up, there's what? One, two, three, four, four. If you got two of them, there's eight oxygens. But if you remove water, that means you remove one. So how many should this have? Seven. Should be seven here. If you count them up, there's seven. So they came together, but you lost water. Okay. This is called pyrophosphoric acid. Why do you think it's called pyro? Pyro fire. Why, why fire? How do you usually make it in hydro? What was the main way we did? Thermal dehydration. You heat the bejeebies out of it. It's usually heat. Okay, see in the old days you take this here and you cook it over the fire. And you can get this out of it. You know, a thousand years ago they used very simple terms. And because they fired it up, pyrolysis. And this is come from something got hey, pyrophosphate. That's how the name came about. It had been, because it, it had been heated over here. Thermal dehydration. Well, pyrophosphate is, well, that's, if you remove the, if you treat it with base and remove these H's, they're all acidic. Still has acidic H's. You can get the tetraanion, I mean, if you remove these three, what do you get? You get PO4 3 minus. That's the phosphate trianion. At this point, you can remove all four of them, like this. That's called pyrophosphate. Pyrophosphate is seen a lot in biochem. Okay. It's actually an anhydride in the basic form. There's other things real quickly. Nitric acid. You take two equivalents of it, heat the bejeebies out of it, what do you get? In terms of formula, what would you think you would get? If you remove water. Not two equivalents. Not one equivalent. One equivalent wouldn't give HONO either because this is not HNO2. Let's see, if we double everything, we get H2N2O6, if we double everything. Now if we remove water, that takes this down to what? And what do we do here? Okay. You get N2O5. If you go back to Gen Chem, it'll, N2O5 is probably in your Gen Chem book and it shows it. But N2O5 is actually an anhydride of nitric acid, where you heated the bejeebies out of it. And there's a central oxygen, and it's bound to two nitrogens, sort of like an anhydride. Okay? Alright. That's all a little bit of free information there. Uh, chemistry of esters. Remember, 
palestra of San Francisco. <laughs> she, uh, her and Fred didn't get along. See, Fred was, uh, Fred's wife was Aunt Esther's sister. The wife had died, but Aunt Esther, the sister, didn't like Fred. I always called him a fish-eyed fool. But Lamont, Fred's son, loved that Aunt Esther. Go ahead. And that's your love Lamont. Yeah. Called him what? Or he loved Lamont too. Yeah, yeah, they loved each other, but uh, Aunt Esther didn't like Lamont's dad. Oh, that was her sister's husband who had died and gone to heaven. And uh, Fred was going to, uh, I'm coming to join you, Elizabeth. All right, y'all can look back on that. That's a little more free information. Okay, chemistry of esters. We've covered acid chlorides, we've covered in hydrides. Those two react with water. Those are very reactive, they're reagents. <coughs> You're not going to find those as final products. When we get to esters, these tend to be final products and they're all over the place. Perfumes have lots of esters. There's a handout that shows scratch and sniff stuff. Esters. Lots of fruits contain esters and that's the fruity smell. But you can mimic that with synthetic esters. Okay, we've already seen how to synthesize esters. Look back at 2B and 3B. We can synthesize them from carboxylic acids. And we showed a chemical that back over there. You can also synthesize them from acid chloride. All this stuff sort of just cycles on itself. Reactions of esters. Well, we can hydrolyze them back to carboxylic acids. That's shown here. But esters don't react with pure water. They're not reactive enough. It requires more than just water. You have to add either an acid catalyst or a stronger nucleophile. So if you add an acid catalyst to water, you get H3O+. <coughs> the stronger nucleophile would be hydroxide instead of water, the anion. So those two are required. And once we get to this point, we can remind ourselves that back over here, anything in the box, such as esters, if treated with H3O+, plus, what do they give? Back up here. Or, you can treat anything in the box with hydroxide and get the same thing. But first you get the anion, because that's basic conditions. If you want to put the proton on, what do you have to add? Acid to put the proton on. So, right here. Now this is just the opposite of a Fischer esterification. If you look at Fischer esterification, we came this way. We reacted a carboxylic acid with an alcohol with an H plus catalyst, and we made this plus what? Plus water. If you want to go this way, you react this not with an alcohol, but with water. And that's essentially what this is. This is water and acid. We're coming this way, it was ethanol and acid. So we've really already done this mechanism, and when we did the Fischer esterification, remember I said everything's reversible. We said each step was reversible. Now, let's sort of go through this maybe partially. What's the first step of this mechanism? As shown, if you're under acidic conditions, the first step in your mechanism is typically going to be what? Protonating something. <coughs> what do you want to protonate? What do we got to do? We got to get this to be a leaving group. We want to replace it with water. Okay, that's not the same oxygen. If you star this oxygen here, it's not that one. It's actually that one. Which oxygen do you want to protonate? The top one. We've done that before. We showed why. This is H plus and water. We can just show it like that. Protonate. Protonation of the carbonyl makes the carbonyl more reactive because now that oxygen is mad. It's like, I need electrons. 
start pulling more on the pi bond. And now this carbon is even more electron poor. It's kind of like you owe somebody some money, but then somehow they lose money in the stock market. What are they going to then do? They're going to say, hey, I need my money because I just lost some. Well, you may say, well, why does it protonate? Well, this is something we knew. This equilibrium here is actually quite small. You only protonate one out of a gazillion. So that's not really a strong base. But the one that we do protonate is the one that then continues on and does the mechanism. Okay? So from there, what do we do? Now our nucleophile will add, and the oxygen gets what it wants. And so now we have, it gets that lone pair, we have another OH, and we have an O with an ethyl and an H. Nucleophilic addition to the protonated carbonyl. At this point, note that the two OHs are identical. Now what do you want to do? Ultimately we need to... Wait, you should have an ethyl. Sorry, I'm doing the opposite. This needs to be an ethyl. And what we brought in doesn't have an ethyl, it has another H. Yeah? Yeah. Is that why this strange face? Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, what's the ultimate goal here? We want to get this one kicked off. Now at this point, what's the better leaving group on this carbon? OH, O-ethyl, or protonated oxygen? Can we make that a better leaving group? What do you want to do? Fire? Protonated with what? The acid that's sitting right here? I mean, that looks like H3O+. Yeah, what do we call that step? H plus transfer. <coughs> OH. Now we can put that proton there and make that a plus charge, and this becomes OH. Now at this point, the two OHs are equivalent. Now what you want to do? We got to make carbonyl. Mm -hmm. Well, anytime you can make pi bond, you can do it with either one. I'm going to do it here. Anytime you can make pi bond and kick off a leaving group, that's easy to do. What does that give? Now, pi bond, we did not lose this H, did we? It doesn't just disappear, it's still there. There's only one lone pair, and by the way, that's a plus charge. That's OH plus ethanol. Already had that drawn. If we had starved that oxygen, you see that that oxygen is lost. How do we get a final product? We just have to lose the proton. Well, what gave up the proton? There's got to be a minus here. This is strong acid in water. What strong acid did we use? Sulfuric, so we got HSO4 minus. This can take the H. We make that and we reform our acid catalyst. We could have used water to take the H and made H3O plus. That would work too. In fact, that's actually strictly more correct. Because H2SO4 and water actually exist as H3O plus. As I've always said, I'd just like to reform the actual acid. Every step up here is reversible. If you reverse it, or you take the acid and the alcohol and make it ester, and the reverse is called what? Fischer esterification. What's this way called? Hydrolysis. What does the term hydrolysis mean? What does hydro mean? Water. Water. Reacting with water. What does lysis mean? Peter? 
cut, cleaved. <coughs> this ester was cleaved with water. And some hydrolysis, if you want, call it hydrolysis. To remember what it means. Reacts with water, cleaves something. The other terminology is hydrolyzed ED. We hydrolyzed the ester. Guess what? Anything in the box can be hydrolyzed with aqueous acid. Water will add, kick off the nitrogen leaving group, the oxygen leaving group, the, chlor the chloride leaving group, or an acid chloride. Acid chlorides are hydrolyzed very easily because they're so reactive. So hydrolysis, hydrolyzed, that's the terminology. And hydrides are hydrolyzed. Because you can add water back to them. It could be the opposite of making the anhydrate. Okay, esters. You can also hydrolyze an ester with aqueous base. And this probably should also include water here. It's not actually in the mechanism, it's, it's act practical. Well, sodium hydroxide is a solid. Typically, you've got to dissolve it. Okay? What's the first step you want to do here? Do you want to protonate the carbonyl? No, we don't have a strong acid. You can't protonate a carbonyl with a base. You protonate something with acid. There's no acid. So what do you want to do? What's the nucleophile here? See, here we have a hydroxide. We got water, but we got hydroxide, which is the, the stronger version of the water. The first step is just this acid carbonyl. Electrons up, you get minus O methyl OH. See, water won't add to the carbonyl unless it's protonated. Why does hydroxide add? Because it's a stronger nucleophile. Okay? Now, what you want to do next? How about if we reform pi bond? Which one do you want to kick off? They're basically, we need to kick this one off. There's no proton to transfer. You're not, you're not going to, whenever we do a proton transfer, we're only protonating, we're only moving a proton that's on a positive atom. We're not going to tr transfer a H on a neutral atom. Not in our simple proton transfer. That's usually always on a positive atom. Look back. What does this give? Reform carbonyl, and now we have OH there. Plus what? OME minus. <coughs> Are we done? What's going to happen now? That's an acid. That's a base. This is going to take the H and give methanol plus what? Plus O minus. What's the purpose of the H plus workup? We made it acidic product under what conditions? That's the first step. Make an acidic product under basic conditions, it's going to be in the basic form. If you want to put the proton on, you've got to supply acid to put the proton on. So that would be a base hydrolysis. Do you, do you not just do the H work up on the O minus? O and me. But once this is formed, it's, it's not going to sit there and ignore this H. Right. 
So, I mean, this happens. This is instant. That's instantaneous. It forms this plus methadone. You mean, you mean... Okay, because you're getting the same product. Yeah, but it's a critical point. Um, that you go back to the pool, but I mean, if you make a if you make a sweater in the pool, it's going to be instantaneously wet. You can't say you can't describe a theory where you're going to make the sweater in the pool and it it just ends up dry. It's going to be wet. This is going to be it's going to get instantly wet, and then you're going to have to dry it off. This is instantaneous. The base will instantaneously take the H. That's your, end, that's your end product, end step one. Did you say that that one is formed because it's more stable in line? Well, this is an acid base reaction, pKa here. What's the pKa of a carboxylic acid? Four to five. <coughs> Forms, what's the ad, what acid was formed uh, over there? Methanol. Sixteen. Which is uh, going to be favored, five or sixteen? Sixteen. That side is favored by 10 to the 11. I mean, that's what, 10 billion? That 10 billion is instantaneous. 10 billion of the molecules instantaneously, instantaneously become minus. Isn't it also because the H-plus is in a separate step? So that's going to happen first before you add the H-plus, right? Before you add what? Before you add the H-plus, the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is two separate steps. That happened last year. This this can, this can happen way down the road. That's two separate steps. I mean, you can keep it in this form for a, a year or two. But if you want to get a neutral product, whenever you decide to do it, you're going to have to add in some acid to get the neutral product. Two separate steps. Okay, there's one for you to work on your own down here. Down here, it's a little bit ester. Here, the, the R group on the oxygen is bigger. Where up here, the R group was sort of small on the oxygen. So when you see an ester, one side could be the big portion or the other side could be the big portion. It doesn't affect the chemistry, though. It's still right there. There's your ester. Attack. What's going to leave, the methyl or the oxygen? Okay, the same chemistry. It's just the leaving group is bigger than the O-methyl. I mean, this could be huge. <coughs> For example, this, this could be, um, you know, morphine. And if you put an acyl group on an oxygen of morphine, what do you get? Heroin. Okay? And you could hydrolyze heroin back to morphine by removing the acyl group, just like you remove the acyl group from that oxygen. So if you look at it over here, oxygen has an acyl, but now it doesn't. Let's go look up the structures of heroin and morphine and codeine. They're all simple. Well, they're all closely related, I should say. Okay. Whenever you hydrolyze an ester, really anything under basic conditions, hydrolyze water and base. A term for that is saponification. At the top of there, we saponified that ester. That's just terminology. What is saponification? Where would that term come from? Sepo. Anybody know sapon? Soap. Put some sap on your soap. Uh, sap on on your skin. Soap on. Soap. Soap. Well, why did, what does soap have to do with this? Well, thousands of years ago, people would make soap. How? They would take these esters. This is a triester. Also known as what? Triglyceride. That's because... Hold on, let's see what the product is. Where do you find triglycerides? It's essentially a type of fat. You take fat, eat it with hydroxide and water, 
what do you get? Well, that's an ester. What happens with an ester when you hydrolyze it? It's lysed. It's cleaved. Essentially, it's cleaved here, cleaved here, cleaved here. What do you get? I'm going to show you the product. You're going to get that alcohol there, where that's three carbons, plus you're going to get the carbonyl with a long chain. <laughs> What's on the carbonyl now? OH. But it's going to be under basic conditions, so how is this going to exist? See, that's lice. You get the OH and you get the OH. Look back at your mechanism, okay? Now you actually get one molecule of these. How many of these do you get? You actually get three of those, so three equivalents. What's the name of this guy? That's glycerol. This is the triester of glycerol called a triglyceride. What is this guy called? It's a carboxylic acid with a long chain that's sometimes called fatty. <laughs> it's a fatty acid. Lipophilic groups are sometimes called fatty as slang because they're very lipophilic. Fats are typically very lipophilic. Fatty acid. What do we what is a fatty acid used as? Fatty acid. What do we use it as? So Look on the back of your shampoo bottle uh, next time you take a shower. Next week or sometime. <laughs> the first ingredient is probably going to be something like sodium meristate. Sodium palmitate. Sodium something. It's a, it's a fatty acid. Fatty acids are like soaps. Let's finish this up. So you take fat. Where did, okay, back in the old days, uh, they made soap like this. Everybody watch Beverly Hillbillies? <laughs> you granny making soap in the backyard? How did granny make soap? She took possum fat, put it in the kettle. What else did she put in there? Water and what? Hydroxide. Where'd she get hydroxide from? Fisher Chemical Company? No, where'd she get the hydroxide from? Where'd she get the lye from? She got it out of the house. Fireplace ashes. Fireplace ashes high in carbonate. Put it in water, you get hydroxide. Okay? Possum fat, fireplace ashes, cook it up. Uh, hydrolysis takes place. This, although it's ionic, is not water soluble. Kind of. What happens if you leave, leave soap in the tub and it stays wet for a while? It'll partially dissolve. But it's not quick. It's not quick because there's so many carbons. It doesn't have a lot of water solubility. This actually will float to the top in your mix. Floats to the top, you skim it off, you put it in molds, let it harden, chip it out. So, okay, Granny was doing chemistry back there in the backyard. I see me at Okay, y'all need to watch Sanford Sun and Beverly Hills. Uh, but let me, please think about this. Why does this act as a soap? Why does that act as a soap? Think about that. Please look ahead. Please look ahead at Ammons. If there's, if there's answers to give, please give the answers. Be ready for next time. See you in lab this afternoon. If you didn't get an NMR and you want NMRs, come by at uh, like 2.30. Uh, I know we ran out of them on Wednesday.